Time to shine today. Podcast squad it is Scott Ferguson and we are at episode 155 and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to bring you this show with my really good friend, Amelia Antonetti. Uh, Amelia is basically a celebrity. Um, she's endorsed by Oprah Winfrey. She's endorsed by Steve Harvey. Uh, the list goes on and on. She's just a fantastic human being, very busy, very accomplished. But when she's talking to you, you feel like you are the only person in the world that exists. And that is something that I respect so much out of somebody that has accomplished so much. So I'm not going to talk and talk and talk. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut up here and bring you this awesome podcast interview with my really good friend, Amelia Antonetti. Let's level up. Time to shine today, Varsity Squad. It is Scott Ferguson. And are you ready to live smarter and improve faster? You know what? My guest right now is endorsed by mm, Oprah. He says she's a visionary and a woman to watch in business uh, by my dog, Steve Harvey. Amelia is a wealth of knowledge in business and relationships. And one of my kind of, I use the word idol kind of lightly sometimes, but Zig Ziglar is somebody that's, you know, fantastic. I was able to actually do some speaking with his son um, on a couple of virtual seminars, but he said Amelia is one of a kind natural leader. Amelia Antonetti is the creator of the Genius Key, which I took the test, which we'll go over that in a little bit, and is one of the most sought after human behavior and strategic advisor experts in the world. Her deep in the trench experience leading organizations and identifying why a company exists and measuring it against how it and their people show up in the world is changing the way we onboard back to business. In 2020, she has successfully led companies through some of the most challenging succession planning m and Merchant Acquisitions, and Crisis Change Management Work. In a series of success planning nearly 30 years, she's the creator of the Genius Key. And without further ado, here's my really good friend, Amelia. And Amelia, please come on, introduce yourself to the Time to Shine Today Varsity Squad. But first, what is your favorite color and why? Ooh, white. Is white. My favorite color. Yes. Yeah? Yes. yes. Why well, first of all, hello, audience. I was, I've been so excited to come <laughs> talk to you. I can't wait. I'm so excited to be here. Um, And the reason white is because it is a clean palette and you can go anywhere from there. (laughs) I love it. I love it. I love that. So Mila, let's get like, you, you've did so much. And we say 30 years, if you're watching this on YouTube, I mean, she is obviously (laughs) gorgeous, but she doesn't look like she could be doing anything for 30 years. Um, can you give us kind of like your origins, kind of where you came from? I know it's a huge Italiano family that you come from. But, Italian mixed with more Italian. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Italian. Exactly. I'd love to be in that household during some cooking one day. I might even get, be able to. Oh, but, yeah. Oh, I, love, I love to cook. I, I love to cook. I will, that would be an honor. I think that's yeah. how you really get to know people is by putting <laughs> bread together. Yes. Yeah. So give us a little bit of origins, please. Um, you know, I think we came to this country with the American dream. You know, my dad tells the story about Mickey Mouse, thinking that that's what he was going to see when he stepped off the plane. <laughs> Big ambitions. Um, I'm so grateful that, you know, my parents took that step to bring us here. My life would have looked entirely different if I wasn't in the United States of America. So I am a very, very grateful um uh, citizen. I'm a, I'm a big military family. Um, you know, air, my uncle, air force, my brothers are Marines. Um, uh, you know, we've got army. I had probably one of the biggest honors of my life was, was speaking in front of the, um, national guard and considering that I'm just a civilian that they asked me to come speak. I was like, Whoa, like, you know, that, um, Eagle trophy that I got for speaking with the military is probably one of my most treasured, um, because I've learned so much from the military. When my brother decided to sign up to be a Marine, the Marine Corps didn't realize that they, they, they were teaching me too. Wow. Wow. That, that's fantastic. And everyone knows that I'm a patriot and I love my country and, you know, serve the country and whatnot. Uh, but like, so you're very, very accomplished individual and, and you, you kind of downplayed every time I say it, but let, let's get into some of that. Like where you kind of started in your aha moments in life. Cause a lot of times I'll go, Hey, what was your aha moment? But you've had a few of them cause you've like did things that, you know, I don't want to get too deep into them cause we could talk forever, but like, what was the aha moments that really woke you up? Like maybe your biggest one, Amelia. You know, so I get, I get them every day. Right. And I think that my biggest aha 
was really listening to that inner voice, that inner instinct. When you're younger, you try to validate that internal voice. You look for confirmation in others or um, the universe, God, what you look for confirmation where it's your journey. It's what you're here to do. So you're not going to get confirmation because it's your story. And so trusting that I have this feeling, I don't need to validate it. Um, I need to trust it. And that really is still my biggest lesson where my instinct will say to me, we should move on this, or this is the next trend, or this is a person we should hire. And somebody will go, wait a minute, have you seen the resume? And I'm like, I'm telling you, this person's a, this person's a winner. And so I no longer, now that I'm in my fifties, I know I don't even waste energy explaining to you what I already know. I know what I know. And if I don't know, the movement towards it will give me the more information so that I can kind of pivot. I think that is part of the reason why I am always willing to do anything with a military person. I will hire military immediately. Um, anything that I can do that's training from the military because they hone in that sense with their brothers and sisters, right? The instinct that's beyond tactical information. And that instinct is the instinct of an entrepreneur. And I say it to people all the time when they go, you know, I can't find good people. I'm like, really? Hire a military person, a first responder, retired law enforcement, because you get this sense of responsibility in movement right. and leadership of a pack. And they're, they can adapt and overcome as well, oh, a lot, lot faster time. than what people, you know, a lot of people don't have that. I do the same thing. I hire military and, Love you know, yep. the people will say, well, they don't have a degree. I don't give a shit. You know, it's like they have experience that you won't have ever. Yeah, so, uh, Sergeant Bivens, I, we're going way back now, taught me something years ago. He was my, he was, um, he was my brother's direct report. And I said, I'm sorry. I, I did something and I said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. He goes, don't tell me you're sorry. I was like, whoa. <laughs> he said, what are you going to do differently? Sorry means nothing to me. Tell me what you're going to do differently next time. So I don't have to have this conversation with you again. Wow. And I was like, there's a powerful moment, yes. right? Because a sorry is just a waste of, it's not telling me we're not going to repeat the experience, right? And so I took that to heart and built that knowledge into my company so that when we find that we could have done something differently, we build it into the processes and the conversation to say, well, what are we going to do differently? Why are we doing it differently than we did it before? And does everybody on the team understand the learning that just happened, whether it's one individuals or a group of people so that we all grow together. I love that because I hear a lot of responsibility and we say at Time to Shine today, the clients I coach and within our squad, you know, responsibility is rooted in the word, the ability to respond. And what you said, you know, don't be sorry. What are you going to, how are you going to respond to it? What are you going to do differently next time? That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, putting that out there, Amelia. So, you know, human behavior specialists, what kind of secret sauce did you use really to help people find their blind spot, like level up past their blind spot in, in the human behavior, like when you were coaching people? And I know you still do, but like, what, what was your secret sauce in doing that? Uh, I mean, so it was, it was the game changer for me early on. When I realized that there was no way for me to compete against Procter and Gamble, Dial and Clorox, the big boys, without people, right? right? So we say people are our greatest asset, but as businesses, we don't treat them like they're our greatest asset. We treat them like they're disposable, right? Yeah. That yeah. top down hierarchy is not healthy for any human. It's right. just not healthy. And so I was like, okay, I can't learn their model and think I'm going to get to success because their definition of success is disposal of people. And so that's not my definition of and success. They won't admit that either. <laughs> of course not. But we, we have so much indication that 
if anybody who's been working inside corporate America will tell you it's not healthy, right. right? It doesn't set us up for good relationships with our peers. And so I was like, I have to do something. And so I said, well, what is it really that we want as humans? Like, what is it? Why, why do we go to work? Right. And so it's about connection, right. And, and to congregate, right. right? Or we would all be at home. Right. And I laugh because this big universal reset. Right. If you listen to the language that happened before we all were quarantined. Right. right. We were like, I hate my neighbors. I hate my job. <laughs> I hate my boss. Right. I hate the people I work with. Now we're like, I would do anything for lunch or, or my boss. All right. Go right. back to that human contact. And so I said, OK, let me explore what is it that we desire in a community, not culture. Right. So right. if you look at a lot of the, the terminology over the last 20 years about building a company culture, if you look at the definition of culture, it's forced upon you. Well, I don't want anybody who feels forced to work with me. I want you to choose to work with me. And so that's a community. And the only way you can build a community is you have to stand for something. You have to stand up and say, this is what I believe in. This is what I think is positive or negative. This is how I want to feel. This is how I want the people around me to feel. You have to have a voice. You can't be politically correct sure. and create a community because you have to give me the opportunity to make a mistake so that I say something that's unbelievably ignorant. And then you go, okay, that sucked. And right. let me tell you why and why I'm so offended by what you said. Yes. So I can go, yeah. whoa, I didn't even realize. Let right. me take responsibility and right. I'm never going to do it again because you just taught me something that I'm putting out in the world that's harmful that I didn't even know I was doing. But if we can't have an honest conversation and you don't give me the room to be human and make a mistake, we're never getting to innovation. We're never getting to change. Right. So what do you think then you might have answered already, Amelia, but what do you think? I mean, with your background in, in the military and growing multiple businesses to millions and upon millions and millions of dollars, what do you think makes a great leader? I know it's such a cliche question, but like I've been wanting to ask you this because you have grown companies from nothing up and you came from this military background. What do you think makes a great leader? So I have two very strong beliefs about what the role of a CEO is. Right and and not over not overly well received either. Um, one is that my primary responsibility is to serve my people. I do not focus on our products and our services. I do not focus on the cons consumer experience. I don't focus on our branding or our marketing. I focus one hundred percent on serving the people in my organization Love it. to understand them. And if I serve them well then I trust that they will then serve others. Love it. But I can't go in two directions at the same time. I can't be serving them and also worrying about some other type of service, right? And so the word service, for some reason, people feel that that's some way subordinate or, or submissive. It's actually one of the biggest responsibilities that you ever could take on is to truly serve others. Absolutely. The second is that a CEO is a witness. Human beings need a witness. Somebody to say, wow, I see and I witness you're in pain. I believe what you are telling me, right? Every person, when they can be validated to be seen, heard, and recognized for who they are and what they're contributing in the world, the entire momentum of the group changes. Love it. And that is the role of the CEO. I hear you. I see you. I'm trying to understand. Let, let me in so that we can be better together. Love that. Love that. So, Amelia, let's get in our, let's get in our DeLorean with Marty McFly. Okay? Yeah, let's okay. Go. Let's go back to the 23-year-old Amelia. My favorite what? number, by the way, 23. Great. What kind of knowledge nuggets, and that's what we call them here at Time to Shine today, what kind of knowledge nuggets are you dropping on the 23-year-old Amelia to maybe shorten her learning curve, level up quicker, take action? Oh, boy, there was so many. Um, I think that my younger self 
really, really, really needed to know that the false belief of not getting hurt, of not being let down, of not letting bad things happen is not realistic. Wow. That is strong. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen no matter what, right? That's what I you're kept thinking, right, that I was going to learn something or get to power and influence, wealth, and then all these bad things weren't going to happen anymore. And the reality is they happen more. Yeah, the farther, the more you go up the proverbial ladder of life or whatnot, the more obstacles you're going to have to overcome. Correct. Right. And so what I needed to do at 23, which has taken me a long time, was to change my perspective when I get ouch moments. When I really, really invest in somebody, when I trust in a friend, when I hire the person for an opportunity and they let you down. Wow. To say, hmm, this isn't about them. This has nothing to do with them. It's your reflection. It's about you. Wow. Because you cannot see in others what does not live within you. Wow. So if you see violence, it's because violence lives in you. If you see mistrust, it's because mistrust lives in you. Whatever you see in another individual, whether you look at an individual and you go, wow, that person's inspiring, or wow, that person's a criminal. Sure. It is a reflection of you. It's a mirror. Yeah, absolutely. So and that's a hard one. Yeah. It's a hard one. So I, I try to teach myself, my team, the people in my life to say the most important conversation that you have every day is the first one you have in the mirror. Right. Yep. Because Absolutely. Because that's the learning for the day. What's really going on here is in that conversation because it's going to start to uncover what really is going on. Sure. And remember, my perspective is what's going on for me. Right. Right. You, your perspective may be that you and I are having a conversation on your podcast. My perspective may be that right now what I'm doing is I am facing a fear of bonding with a different audience. My fear of maybe I'm not going to be accepted in this younger, kind of hipper, cooler audience, right? So for what's going on for you and what's going on for me are two different things, but they're both real. Right, right. Love it. That, that, that's very transparent. That's awesome. So being a, a female and, and now a very powerful one, what, what was a big obstacle that you had to really break through being a female? Because, I mean, you told me the story about the start of the Listerine strips and being overseas and they kind of laughed at you and, and whatnot. Like, what, what, what do you find was the biggest obstacle? And, and, and what did you do to, like, kick that freaking door down and whatnot? So, there, so first of all, you got to remember where I was, right? So in the 80s, when I, you know, I started my first, first company at 17, I sold it at 19, right? In the 80s, there was no Oprah. There was no Martha Stewart. There wasn't like a bunch of women for me to look at and go, oh, there's my role model, right? right? At the time in the 80s, there was Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Whoopi Goldberg doing Jumpin' Jack Flash and getting a lot of flack because <laughs> she was a white guy, yeah. right? And then there was Barbara Walters, who was this fierce interviewer on, on TV. And sure. those were really the two big influences. And I was like, well, I'm no Barbara Walters. Like, I have no desire to go and be a journalist. Sure. Right? And I loved Whoopi, but I'm not funny, right? <laughs> so I was like, hmm. <laughs> I don't identify with either one of them, right? And so the momentum of the 80s coming into the 90s was um, a very strong female empowerment. You know, women don't need uh, men. We don't need any, like this really kind of negative energy. And I understand where the momentum was coming from because we were trying to climb the corporate ceiling and all that kind of stuff. But that wasn't my experience, right? right? So even though other women were like, hey, you know, jump on this, this female bandwagon. Sure. You forget that it was men, right? So when I, when I joined at the time, which was YEO, which is Young Entrepreneurs Organization, which right. is now EO, they dropped the Y. <laughs> There was a hint, there was like six women in the entire organization. 
And we really wanted mentors. It was the first time I heard the word mentor, but none of the men, they were like, oh, hell no. My wife is not going to be letting me mentor you. Right. right? So I was doing interviews with not just the men, but the women. And it was a forum group, a group of men who had been in forum for a long time, who decided to say, you know what, let's bring this chick in because we don't know how it's going to impact us, but it's going to impact us. A new member would have affected anybody, whether I was male or female, but more so because I was a female. Sure. And those men became a game changer for me because it was a place for me to have conversations, for me to understand how being female was different than being a male CEO. Right. It was having a buffer to say, wait a minute, this is me responding as a CEO. This has nothing to do with me be responding as a female. Right. And then also understanding how the processes and procedures for me was going to be different. And when I started saying that being a female CEO is different than being a male CEO, I got quabbled in the media. I mean, <laughs> they came after me like nobody's business. How dare you? Because a woman can do a job as good as a man. And I'm like, that's not what I said. I think a woman absolutely can do many jobs as well as men. And there's jobs that we can't. Sure. And I didn't learn until I climbed Kilimanjaro that peeing standing up is an art form, right? I mean, I was like, holy, <laughs> now I take back everything that I ever said. <laughs> now that I try to she weed <sighs> freezing cold, I get it, right? I was like, there's just certain things that we're not wired to do naturally. Doesn't right. mean we can't learn them. Sure. But when we go back to just physics, right? right. There's just there are just things that are just different. It's just not good or bad. It's just different. So it started unraveling for me. Well, what's my genius, right? So if I came in this packaging, how does this packaging impact my brilliance? Sure. And what's that lens? And then looking at a similar genius through different packaging to see how it stays the same, but then see how it also becomes different and really just peeling back all of these different layers. Love it. And then okay with the fact that when people came out of me and said, oh, well, the reason why you built a school inside your business, because I thought no parent, right, should be have to commute to their child sure. and make a living, that when they said, well, that's because you're a female CEO, and I was like, or because I'm a great CEO. Right. I love it. Or yeah. it could be this other thing. And not to take it so personally, right, because sure. people just say what they say because they're trying to find their way. And sometimes it comes out in real ignorance. I mean, sure. I've had all kinds of things said to me and I kind of go, interesting. I wonder where you're coming from. Right. Instead of being offended, I want to know where are you coming from and what experience led you to that conclusion? Right. So that I can understand with empathy sure. and be able to either leave you a nugget to try to help you to go, hmm, Actually, your your story you're telling you has no legs. Right. Or to let it go and just say, this is not my lesson to learn. Gotcha. Yeah, I love that. It, it, what you kind of brought back that you cannot see in others, but you know, does not live in you. And like that's what other people will come at you because it's something that's already inside them. So Amelia, yeah. what is I want to know how you want your dash remembered. And so does my squad. They want to know, like that little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date. What, what is that dash? How does that look like for Amelia? How do you want that remembered? And that's beautiful. I love that. Right. So one of the exercises we do in the genius Institute is we ask everybody to write their headstone. Okay. Right? Because I'm a big believer that if you know and define where you're going, the rest is easy. Right. And so that dash is that same concept. And so for me, my headstone says she made a difference. And so my only goal, whether you like me or you don't like me or whether you agree with me or you don't agree with me is to get you to think, to make a difference in your thinking. Even if you go, okay, I heard everything you said, Amelia, and I still disagree. You now have the value of, you know, why you disagree. And that is just as important. Love it. And, and so that, let's get to this genius key and like to spend about five minutes or so on this. Okay. And I, you know, I did 
uh, I had the um, opportunity, Amelia was so gracious to send it over to me. And I got my results and I like, want to kind of start like, you know, about the Genius Key and what it will do to help companies and others level up. Right. So the geni- the reason why we developed the Genius Key was to help leaders be blind and deaf to the genius of others. So right now, whether you want to or not, with no ill intent, your biases are influencing your decisions. They just are. Right. And so I like to say, um, you're only as good as your last best experience and your last worst experience. So if your last experience was a woman was horrific in doing the accounting, then you believe that women are bad in accounting. Sure. There's no book, there's no education that I can do to weigh more than your last experience. The only way I'm going to move you is to give you another experience that's either the same or different. Now, now you're learning, right? And so inside of an organization, what's happening is we're not setting people up to have experiences. We're setting them up to either validate or not validate their biases. Sure. Right. And so you choose to give work or to work with the ones that you can kind of understand or identify. You rarely will pick somebody go, you know what? I don't get along with this person at all. I can't wait to work on a project with them. (laughs) You just, that's not how we behave. And so I was like, well, what if we couldn't see and we couldn't hear? What if we couldn't apply our biases? How would we then assign work? And that's the premise of the genius key. The genius key is saying, Inside this organization, here are all your keys of genius, right? And these keys are held by all these individuals, right? And so for you, when you went through the genius key, it identified your keys, what makes you a genius. I was auditory. I was goal energized, focus and attention Mm -hmm. and perfect charmer. And I'm a water life force. So I I actually dug and read everything (laughs) after I did it, but you know, so you're, so you're, char- so you're again, being a perfect charmer, right? You are extremely charming. It isn't something that you were taught, right? right? You innately have always been charming. Even when I would have met you, if I, you were in elementary school, your teachers would say, oh my God, he's so charming. He's mm-hmm. like, you had that gift sure. of attracting and feeling familiar. And because you feel familiar, people want to be around you. So the fact that you're hosting on a podcast is no shocker, right? It's in your genius area because you feel familiar to people. Right. And that's a gift. And so on the other side, if the company went through to identify its desired outcome, it would turn that outcome into keys as well. And then the matrix would then do a match so that you would be paying for jobs and tasks that match your innate genius. Love it. Now you would know, oh, I know why she's asking me to join this project. She's looking for my charm key. She's looking for my fluidity, the water key, right? right. And now I, you know why I'm asking, right? right? And I also know where you fit. Love this. And, and the desired outcome matches your language of what has meaning and value to you. Not my language, your right. language. So now you're, it's speaking to you saying, here's what you get for being part of this project. And it's dialed into your specific language. The best part of it is until you click, yes, I'm very interested. I want to be part of this team. I don't know that you're a boy. I don't know if you're a girl. I don't know if you're black. I don't know if you're white. I don't know if you're military. I don't know where you went to school. I don't know anything about you. All I need to know as the leader is you have a key that unlocks my desired outcome. That is awesome because it's like so many other, and nothing against the DISC and, and all the other programs. It just dug so far in when I was taking it because I was like, shit, man. It was like page after page. But then I started getting really, really, wow this test is, is asking me things and, you know, it was fun. And then as I read it, I'm like, man, they, they pegged me. It was, it was amazing. The biggest difference this is, and I have, I have been a fan of trying to understand why and why we're here and what we're supposed to do for 30 years. Sure. What you cannot forget, not ever in any equation that has to do with a human is free will. 
We right. all have free will. You choose how you want to show up in the world. So even though I may be predispositioned to have a very bad temper, and that bad temper was reinforced by a loud Italian family, I choose not to. Right. And so when you go through so many of these other testings, it says, this is what you are. There you go. You can't change it. So you might as well plan for it. And I keep going, well, wait a minute. What if I choose not to be that? What if I choose to respond versus react? Love it. What if I take that responsibility of designing how I want to show up in the world? And the genius key is helping you identify what is innately there and then taking you through a Q&A to say, does it work for you? Do you like yourself? Let me show you the mirror, Amelia, when you behave with a bad temper. And I'm like, I actually don't like the way I, I don't like the damage that I do. I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I sound. I want to choose something differently. And then the genius key teaches you other keys so that you use the new key versus the key you came with. Love it. And it just unlocks. That's beautiful. Amelia, I got to get us into our leveling up lightning round, okay? We're going to have a little fun. You and I could talk forever on each one of these, and maybe we will one day in the future, but... Oh, I'm coming down your way. Are you awesome. coming? I'm going to be a visitor. Yes, you better. You better. We're here in South Florida paradise, but uh, you and I could talk forever on each one of these, but I get you have five seconds. No okay. explanation on any of these, and I'm going to hold you to it. You ready? Okay. All right. Millie, what is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Trust your gut. Love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Getting in nature. Love it. So not the book you're reading now, not the book you wrote, not the flavor of the month. If if I'm in my doldrums and I'm like, shit, and you're like, Fergie, read this. What is it? Anything from Sinusinic. Beautiful. Beautiful. Your most commonly used emoji when you're texting. Oh, squishy hugs. Squishy hugs. If physically, physically, if you could be one age for the rest of your life and continue to have knowledge and grow in your wisdom, what would it be? 45. Love it. Your favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time and or money to? War on suicide. Thank you for saying that. My little brother took his life, so I, I give the same thing. So what is that last question? You can elaborate on this one a little bit, but what is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Ooh, the best decade of music. Um, ugh. So I love the big band era, swing and the big band. Wow, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I love Motown. Like, I'm a big Motown girl. Like, anything from that era, I love. It's just, (laughs) it's emotionally inspiring for me. I'm from the D. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. Something about that is what I put on when I want to create or reinvent that, that time. Love that. I love that. So obviously we can go to the geniuskey.com, um, which I'm going to hope that everybody does that. It'll be in the show notes. Was there any other uh, place where we can find you, Amelia? Amelia.com. Love it. And you got to check out that website. That's fantastic. Amelia, quickly leave us with one last knowledge nugget you, you want us to take with us, internalize and take action on. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Love it. Love it. And squad, you've been basically got a free freaking masterclass from my really good friend, Amelia, who's going to tell you to listen to your inner instinct and trust it. Don't look for confirmation or validation from others. Don't be sorry. You know what? Just freaking make your mistake and then realize what you're going to do differently. You know, she tells us community is key, not so much culture because culture is forced upon you. Stand for something. A good CEO or leader is going to serve people. Primary responsibility as a leader is to serve people and to trust that those people will start to serve others. And also CEO is a witness. He's a noticer. He's going to show you how he believes in you. And he's going to ask how you're doing. You know, false beliefs of not being hurt is not realistic. So you're going to hit speed bumps, blow through the fucking speed bumps. You cannot see in others what does not live in you. So understand that when you're seeing somebody and you're seeing something negative in them, it's inside you too. Look in the mirror, fix that. There's great steps for that. And define where you're going. The rest will be easy. If you can really define it, and she understands that free will is you choose how you want to show up in the world. 
And, and I'm just blown away. Thank you so much for your valuable time. You level up your health. You level up your wealth. You're so giving. You're a beautiful human being inside and out. You're part of our squad now. Thank you so, so much for coming on, Amelia. It's an honor to be part of your squad. Thank you. Awesome. Hoorah.